Well, hello friends, it's your old buddy Luke Clayton, and welcome to this week's of Sportsman's Life. Now, Jeff and Larry can't be with me on the first segment here. Guess what I'm about to do? I'm heading out for my first archery deer hunt for the fall here. Uh, my goal is to get some venison in the cooler, looking for a mature buck, and I don't care if it's a, a spike buck or one this big, one like one of these hanging up here, that would suffice quite well. I'm at, still at my little cabin here. But I'm going to walk you through our hunt. I'm going to do some cooking, and uh, it's a solo hunt. I'm going to spend about two or three days out by myself in the woods. I'm going to give you a little idea of what it's like. Uh, I may shoot a hog. Uh, I've been told that I could turn an elephant hunt into a hog hunt, and I usually, <laughs> I usually have a tendency to bring back some pork. So we'll see. We're after some venison, though. That's what we're really after. Let's load up in the truck. I'm still at the house here at my little cabin behind the house. Take my gearhead bow. I love this bow. We're going to take it out and see if we can get us some meat, folks. So stay with me. We'll, you'll join me back down here at the Buck and Bass Ranch. Well, folks, we are all unpacked. I am all unpacked. And I thought it would be a good idea to get a little jump on dinner. Got some really good German sausages. And we're going to do this kind of Wisconsin style, if you will. Jeff would be proud of me here. We're going to take these sausages. And by the way, this is some really, really good German sausage. It's got a good lot of garlic flavor. And guess what? Just like we were up at a deer camp maybe in Wisconsin, how about let's just steam these in some good deer for about, oh, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes. Then I'm, my plan is, when I get back from hunting here, you know, reduce the water after these are done, reduce the beer, I should say, and then we're going to put some cabbage in here and have some cabbage, sausage, and I'll make some cornbread on top of the skillet. So next it's time to cook these up, get them brown, and then turn them off, let them kind of set in that beer for a while, come back, put some cabbage with them after we kill a hog or a doe or have a good time trying. Okay, here is our skillet full of the good German sausage. You see some of those sausages on top. A bunch of it is down in the cabbage and some good green cabbage. We're going to let this cook along until the cabbage is wilted down probably about 20 or 30 minutes. Make some cornbread and when I get back in from hunting this afternoon, hog, deer, or no hog and deer, Oh, Luke is going to eat pretty good, I do believe. Well, folks, I'm going to be a little quiet because I'm going to be hunting about 200 yards through the woods there. kind of showed you that a little bit earlier. Got the gear head ready to go. I'm all tuned up. Have the thermosil with me. So, mosquitoes or not, we're going to be ready. Uh, I'm going to go into stealth mode when I get down there. But I'll give you a look around, show you the stand. I'm the little pop-up blind I'm hunting out of and then show you the feeder in the woods. But I'm going to be quiet because those deer or hogs could be bedded. They probably are bedded within 100 yards of that, or there probably are some there. So let's get going down there and see what we can do.
Well, folks, here is the blind I hunted from this morning. I'm going to give you a close look at this. This is a Jeff Rice design, one of the most awesome ground blinds I've ever hunted in. I'm going to give you a little quick tour here in a minute. Do you see those two bucks? One was probably a year and a half old, uh, smaller buck, and the other was a little bit bigger, but they weren't the type. The small one was actually legal. He was a spike. The other one was a four corn. He was not legal, but that, that little year and a half old, he was a little bit too small. Let him grow a bit and we'll get him. But uh, i tell you what I'll do. I'm going to bring the camera around and show you this blind right here. This thing is awesome. Check this blind out, folks. Now note the, the entrance to it. This is a good design for you here, Jeff. Came up with this. I guess this has been in place a couple of years now. Take a look at this. Here's the entrance to it right here. Walk in it. We'll just do that. Here's looking out. Those deer were right out there a little bit earlier. Pretty awesome design, I'll tell you. And it's plenty roomy. For a bow hunter, you can sit back. This is where I was sitting, right here in this chair in the very back. And gosh, you're five feet from that window. You've plenty of room to hide. So good, good spot to hunt from. <clears throat> and as you see, the deer were right on top of us, right there. Folks, we're going to head, I'm going to head back to the camp and we're going to chicken fry some, some deer steak. Not from this year. Haven't, <laughs> haven't loosed an arrow yet, but this is some mule deer steaks that I had frozen from, from last year. I took a nice mule deer buck out on the Eason Ranch and uh, we'll go have a little lunch. My hunt is actually over. I'm going to have to pick Go back into civilization, pick my wife up this afternoon. But I will show you how, how we're cooking the steaks. It's been a fun, fun time, and it's not over yet. I've got several hours to spend down here. So let's join me back up at camp. We'll do a little chicken fried deer steak. So oh, now we have most of the cooking oil grain, the grease if you will. Let's saute these onions, and then we'll fold in a little bit of the uh, gravy. It'll make the gravy, get it real thick, and then add a little bit more water, put some rice in it, and then we'll put a lid on it. So here we go. Okay, our gravy is thickening up. You can tell, tell what we're working with. I'm going to add a little bit more water to this right now. Not a lot, we just don't want to scorch anything. That's the key from here on. That gravy will thicken back up here in a bit. So let's put a lid on this rascal and let it cook for about 30 minutes real low. We'll bring it back up to temperature and uh, let it cook for about 30, 40 minutes. And that'll get that meat super tender and then we will add some rice, a little more water and let it cook about 20 more minutes. Then some of the best camp mother deer steak that we ever ate. Well folks, here we are inside with the finished product. Smothered steak, rice, and gravy. Pretty good camp fare, folks. It's time for me to sit down and enjoy one or two plates of this. This is just a little opening here on my property that uh, we don't mow it, we don't really go back in here a whole heck of a lot. And so I decided I would like to try to plant a tree back in here and of course, you know, being good stewards of the land, the best thing to do is plant trees. If you take trees out, certainly want to replace them. I have some Burr oak, which is in the white oak family, that we're going to plant one right smack dab in the center here to see if we can get a tree growing here. It's the perfect spot. It's very open. We do have one large uh, tree to my left here, but it's far enough away that it won't impede with a with a big white oak when we put it in here or a burr oak. So let's get a tree planted. 
Okay, where I've got my uh, post hole digger here is about dead center in this little spot here. So this is where we're going to plant our uh, burr oak. And as you can see, <clears throat> we've got burr oak acorns. I want to give you an idea what these things look like. So this one here has had the cap taken off of it. And that's what you want to do to plant these. You don't want to plant them with the cap on. Take the cap off. And they're very easy. You just have to peel like so and they will come off relatively easy. There you go. This one I've had off for a few days. It's starting to brown already, but that's what they look like. Of course, you want to check your acorns out very, very carefully. Make sure there's no holes in them. The first thing you really want to do is uh, do the float test. So take your acorns, throw them in a bowl of water. If there are any that float, throw them away. The ones that sink and have no holes or any marrings on them, or scars on them are the ones you want to plant. So I've got a handful here. I've already done the water test on, on these ones here, and of course they all sank, so they're ready to they're ready to be planted. So what you want to do, we are in the fall, so these acorns are just coming off the trees now. Uh, certain acorns and nuts you can actually go ahead and plant in the fall, and they will get their little roots started. For next spring, they'll take off. There are some acorns, however, and nuts that you have to go through the stratification process. In other words, you need to keep them dormant until spring. And how you do that basically is put them in dirt or put them in um, maybe wet paper towel and into a plastic bag. Put them in the refrigerator so they go into a dormancy stage and then 120 days out or so, spring starts to start come rolling around and no more freezes. Then you can pull them out and plant them. White oaks or burr oaks, you can plant now. They do not have to go through the stratification process. Of course, that all is going to depend upon where you live. If you're living in the north, where there's lots of ice and snow, you want to check out the uh, stratification process on, on planting So in your area. So let's go ahead and get this thing in the ground. Uh, I've got about a dozen more here, so we're going to go around the property and we're going to strategically place these uh, where we want them. So. This is a great way to, to give back to your land, if you will. Putting, planting other trees in there, you know, will be there for the future. So, you know, 20 years from now, this thing will be dropping big acorns. And I tell you what, there's some trees here that I know will have deer stands in them. So deer love acorns. So get, plant some of these. This is a great thing to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing planted. Okay, friends, as you can see here, we've got a hole that's probably, oh, eight or ten inches deep. You do not want to plant your acorns eight or ten inches deep. The reason I dug it out a little bit is I'm going to put this soil, this sandy loam, back in so there's some loose soil underneath it and there's some loose soil on top of it. So you want this to be about no more than maybe two inches under the soil. So. Let's go ahead and get started here. Go ahead and fill this back in with soil. And again, you can see how sandy that soil is. We don't want to pack it too much. But get her about right there. And then we're going to take our burr oak. You don't want to put it straight up and down or upside down. You want to lay it on its side. Just nestle it in there like that. And then, I'm going to go ahead and cover it up, about two inches of soil. There we go. Just like that. We will pat it down a little bit. Just a little bit more on top. And then we're going to dump a little water on there. I want to wash it out. I just want to get enough in there to... Let it soak down in there. Perfect, now it's soaked down in there and we are done. Now we've got 12 more to go or 10 more to go. You can see it bubbling there. It's water just soaking down in that soil and we'll be good to go. So with any luck, we'll have a uh, nice baroque tree here in a few years. So that is how you do it.
Well, we have all of our bur oaks planted, and uh, we had oh, five or six left over, and I've put five of those six, obviously, in this bucket, and uh, down the road, when these things do sprout, I will find a place for them here on the property, so it's really good to get out there and, and plant, uh, you know, new plants, new trees, uh, it's our future. So, got one acorn left here, we're going to decap this one and find a, a place along the way back to camp to, to stick it in the ground. So, well folks, thank you so much for joining me on this segment here on A Sportsman's Life. Get out there and plant trees. It's good for the future. Now back to the show. Nate Watson, DSC. We're getting ready for a convention, right? Yes, sir. It is ramping up. We are 100 and I think today's six days away, so ah, counting the days at this moment. Oh right? yeah, it, we're we're in full convention swing. So convention is January sixth through 9th at the K Bailey Hutchison Convention Center in downtown Dallas. It is gonna be an awesome convention. It's gonna be great to have the hunting world all in Dallas for those four days as we get to celebrate our hunting heritage and conservation. So if you uh, by chance are in Dallas or coming to the show. Uh, we look forward to seeing you there. Um, a couple pro tips from the membership coordinator while you're there. If you join or renew your membership at the convention, you actually get a free day pass into the show. And you can purchase a multi-year membership to get uh, multiple day passes as well. So another perk of also signing up or renewing your membership at the convention is you'll be entered to win the hunt giveaway we'll be running that's only available to those who join or renew at the convention. You also um, we'll have the chance to get our free member gift that we only give away at the convention. At the last convention, we gave away DSC tumblers, um, and then this year it's going to be a surprise too. So it's a great time to sign up or renew that membership, get free admission into the show, and check out one of the greatest hunting conventions in the world. Here on the Mescalero Apache Reservation on a hunt that we auctioned off thanks to the Mescalero Apaches, the Russell Station, and Derek Derringer, and the hunt was bought by <laughs> Mr. Darren Rhodes. Part of the hunt was is that of all the things I got a chance to hunt and get to shoot a management bull. And this is the bull that we called in this morning. I say we. James called this bull in like he had him on a string. Hopefully you'll watch the show actually how it unfolded on A Sportsman's Life. Hopefully some of these days in the future we can steal some of that footage and bring it to, uh, uh, well I'll say it's on a sportsman's life, it's going to be on Trigicon's World of Sports and Field initially and once we do that we'll try to steal some footage and show you how that bull came in on a string. Using a Remington 700 that I built back in 1998 at the Ilian factory and uh, took to uh, British Columbia and shot a really nice 6x6 six six bull elk up there in a Rocky Mountain goat. Now it's mounted with a Trigicon AccuPoint scope and shooting Hornady's Precision Hunter. It's a 220 grain ELDX and I'm not going to show you the devastation that thing did. I shot him through both shoulders and I like to shoot. So I had two more chances to get a shot sent to him and put him down and coming to the Mescalera I want to tell you something. If you're interested in a hunt, now if you're interested in a trophy hunt, it's tough to get in. You almost have to be barn into it. But uh, for a management bull sometimes they're permits available, there are cow permits available, the facilities are out of this world, the food's good and the guides are better and the people are better and all the other things put together and that's saying a whole lot. So hopefully somewhere down in the future we'll be able to show you a little bit more about this bull and how we called him in and some of the other bulls we called in on Sportsman's Life. But like I said in the meantime, be watching for it on Trigicon's World Sports Field.
the DSC Foundation was started probably about five years ago, and, and uh, we're here today with Mr. Darren Rhodes, who bought the Miscalary Apache Reservation Hunt that we sold at our DSC Gala. DSC Foundation, our job is to make money so that we can give money away to extremely vetted projects dealing with conservation, education, and hunter advocacy throughout the world. And this is absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for the money that you spent, because the money that you spent is going to go a long way in helping us reach those different goals. So what do you think about all this? What do you think about DSC Foundation? I maybe should ask you first. And then what do you think about the hunt here? Well, I, I, I love what they do with the conservation and care about the animals. Uh, the Mascalero, <laughs> I've, I've wanted to come here for years, but haven't been able to, but this is, yeah, this is an elk, <laughs> elk hunter's dream. There's just elk, elk everywhere. We have 20 bulls bugling right here still now. Well, I was able to take one this morning. You took another bull yesterday, and then this absolutely fantastic bull. It's just, I love this bull. I do too. Congratulations, yeah. Yeah. and thank you for everything. Thank you for supporting DSC Foundation. I, I appreciate it, Larry. Thank you. Y'all join us again next week right here on The Sportsman's Life. And a special thanks to these fine sponsors. Air Force Air Guns, B&B &B Charcoal, Dallas Safari Club, Hornaday, Pyramid Air, Taurus Firearms, Sightmark, Smokin' Tex, Snaplock Hunting Blinds, TRHP Outdoors, and Striper Express.